So last, it felt like longer ago. So last Wednesday, that accident at the border took place. Yes. Mm -hmm. Where there was the, the vicious car accident with the Bentley, and no one in the moment knew what was going on. Not yeah. you, I, our elected officials, nobody knew. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm following that like everyone else as it's happening. And question period begins 2.15 2 in the House of Commons in Ottawa. And Pierre Polyev, who's up, depending on which poll you look at, anywhere from 12 to 15 points up in the polls on our current prime minister, gets up as official leader of the opposition and would like an update. Fair question. The second point Pierre Polyev raised was he said, according to broadcast reports, this was a terrorist attack. I was following that story like everyone else in the moment. And for, and for and one of the rare moments, we all kind of knew the same thing roughly because no one knew anything. The only outlet that was reporting a terrorist attack at that time was Fox News. I know that because I was on it like everyone else. So Pierre Polyev got up in question period and cited this report. Now, the next day, in an exchange with a Canadian press reporter, he was asked if that was appropriate for a member of the official opposition to just toss around media reports when really um, Justin Trudeau and his cabinet were, were learning on the fly what was going on here. And the exchange was fascinating. Take a look. Do you think it was responsible for you to call yesterday's explosion by the customs, uh, by the checkpoint at the Rainbow Bridge, terrorism, when no U.S. or Canadian officials said that was the, or authorities said that was the case, and when the New York governor also said there was no evidence to suggest terrorism activity? Actually, you're wrong. Are you a CP? Okay, so CP, by the way, CP, just for everyone's knowledge, did have to make three corrections for falsehoods that they put into a single article. I think that might be unprecedented. Um, I'm actually thinking about checking with the Guinness Book of World Records to see if there's ever been a news agency that has had to issue three corrections for patent falsehoods that they admit they had been made in one single article, and now you've made yet another falsehood in your question. He went on to cite the CTV report in terms of what he was raising in, in the House of Commons. CTV had not released a report at that point. They did about, about 20 minutes after that. But in the moment, again, this was a Fox News report, and I understand someone who wants to be the prime minister of the country not wanting to be the Fox News citing person. I get that. But that's how that played out. Who would like first dibs at this? I'll start by um, just saying that there has been, over the last few years, this consistent attack on the media. Um, and right there, that question was asked. Instead of addressing the, the question itself, it goes on to attack the agency, being CP which Canadian press, if you don't know, they fuel a lot of stories here throughout the country with amazing journalists who vet everything. And if there is a retraction that needs to be made for any reason, there is no hesitancy to do that. And I think what that exchange shows is that there is this pressure or this consistent narrative that the media is putting out falsehoods on purpose. And this whole fake news situation that we've been hearing about, you know, ever since the pandemic began, we're, it, it, it's, it's just something that's being fed. And I don't agree at all, obviously, as someone who does news every day and knows how much we do try to check and verify things before they're being said out loud. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. Well, what's interesting with that, too, uh, completely agree, uh, Tammy. It's also, it's not just what was said, it's also sort of how it was being said and the tone in which it was being said. I mean, it's one thing if that's the opinion that he holds, but the, the tone didn't work for me when I was listening to it. Uh, it, it, was, it was aggressive in a way that isn't appealing when you're thinking about leadership and you're thinking about dissent and you're thinking about conversations that need to have, uh, need to happen. Um, so, it, it, yeah, it was the, the, the way it was said, too, that, that caused me some pause. Diva? I would say the reporter, and my apologies, I don't recall the person's name right now, but the way she asked the question was incredible. She said, do you think it was responsible? That was the question. He already premeditated what he wanted to say to see. Oh, he was bracing. Because you don't rhyme sure. off what you just rhymed off without having that ready to go. So he knew as soon as she asked the question that that was going to be his response no matter what. He was just waiting for a moment to attack. Um, some people like that in their leader, to be condescending and aggressive with their words. Uh, we've seen that south of the border. Uh, that doesn't work for me. I'm not a big fan of that. Um, but you didn't answer the question, dude. She just asked if it was responsible. Right. You didn't answer yes or no on that. Yeah, I'm with you. 
like these, the polls that are out right now, we've cited them numerous times. These are not I love Pierre Polyev polls. These are Trudeau fatigue mm -hmm. numbers, plus the economy. This is not rocket science, okay? Secondly, how many, how many media do you think, Tam, on a daily basis during a Canadian federal election follows a party leader every day? What would you say? Oh, gosh. I would say at least 20. I don't at know. at yeah. minimum. Minimum, yeah. You're in a bigger city? Yeah. Maybe double it? Mm -hmm. If that's the reaction on a November day, two years out from an election, I am fascinated to see what he's like when, the heat, when he's really on that political rotisserie and, re and the country's really taking a look at what this is going to be like. As a voter in the GTA, and we matter here, as a voter in the GTA, that's a level of exhaustion day in and day out I don't need in a party leader. Say what you want about Justin Trudeau. He's not perfect. I don't get that tone a lot. And I don't need that tone. I've seen that tone with our neighbors. I don't need that tone at all. Um, so someone who has a vested interest in him becoming prime minister really has to, what's the phrase, you better talk to him? Mm. Somebody needs to talk to him. Because that Pierre, like he's been in the House of Commons since he's been like 24. Like that's the speed he knows. Like that's what that's that's been his life experience at that as a professional. Finally, I need to know when you're talking to China as as a leader of this country or India or when NATO is saying you're not paying enough for military or Joe Biden, what's that going to be like? If if that if that gets under your skin, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me as a party leader, as a world leader, as a G7, G12 leader? There's time to round out those edges. It's not election time yet. We say the same thing with Trudeau, but listen, don't assume anything. Stephen Harper assumed a lot with Trudeau. That idiot Andrew Scheer assumed a lot with Trudeau. Aaron O'Toole assumed a lot with Trudeau. If you get into tone, he will spin you into a pretzel, and then we'll see where we're at. But there's still time. As a GTA voter, didn't like it. We'll see where we go from here. Uh, let us know. Feedback at breakfasttelevision.ca. This one's got people talking.